Alright everyone, well, I might as well do the first movie review of 2019 with one that I obviously anticipated, and that is Glass. Yes, directed by M. Night Shyamalan, who, well, did a couple of great films before, and then pretty much went on a shit streak, and then thankfully almost came back, and then, well, came back fully with Split. The 2016, and which most of us probably saw in 2017, I pretty much counted it as one of the best movies of 2017. It was a huge comebacker mystery thriller film starring Jenks McAvoy, who you probably remember as Charles Xavier. He obviously has 24 different personalities, and obviously this movie exists in that universe, and for most of you who haven't seen that movie or Unbreakable, some spoilers are in order, but mostly for Split. You find out at the end of Split, major spoiler here, that the movie Unbreakable, which was another pretty good film, not his best, but not his worst either, you know, at least it was made before he went on the shit streak, it's not six cents great, but it was a pretty good uh, thriller type superhero-like movie, but it was more kind of down to earth, per se. It was about Bruce Willis's character obviously surviving a train wreck, being the only one to survive it, that is, and of course stars alongside Samuel Jackson. And so you find out that that movie, at the end of Split, exists in the same universe, how kind of similar to how the, all the Avenger movies exist in the same universe as well. And this movie, Glass, is the one that brings all those characters together. It brings Bruce Willis's character, Samuel Jackson's character, and James McAvoy's character as well, it's all together. So I didn't really know what to expect out of this one, and I thought, you know, because Shyamalan finally got back on the streak of making good films, and I didn't get my hopes up too high on this one, I was just hoping for a decent thriller. And most critics were kind of mixed to somewhat negative on this one, so my thoughts are, I went to see it with an open mind and very kind of low expectations, and I kind of wasn't too surprised, but I will say one thing, okay, I will try to keep spoilers to a minimum on this one. First thing, yes, this film is kind of long, so that's the first thing I should establish. I will say, yes, it's definitely way better than critics are making it out to be. It's not his best, but there are some things you do have to compliment, and that is the performances by Bruce Willis and James McAvoy. You can always expect good performances out of these actors, and, well, for the most part, I felt the pacing was a little inconsistent for some parts. There are some good parts, I will say, and, of course, I did see it in one of those Dobley theaters that one actually just opened in, the one I usually go to in at AMC, and it was kind of cool hearing all the rumble effects and everything, because that's what it adds a lot more sound depth, unlike IMAX, which puts a lot more picture depth to it, which this one does, but it's more about the... Because it has, of course, recliner seats, which are kind of cool. It's almost like sitting in a living room sofa inside of a movie theater, and the rumble effects in the seats that you feel whenever there's a fight sequence, which Bruce Willis comes in usually most of the time fighting James McAvoy's character to free his captives, which he sort of does the same thing in the movie Split, so it's like both worlds colliding finally. You know, you get the hint of it in the end of the movie Split, so it's like, this is what it comes to. Which was an interesting concept for the most part, but I feel as if they kind of dragged this movie on. And like I said, it is a little bit long for some parts, and there's just a lot to really be thrown at you, and it's just a lot to really take in and follow. There are a lot of long dialogue sequences, and yes, even the director himself makes a cameo, no surprise. He's done it in pretty much every one of his movies he directed. And Samuel Jackson's character, I like his character for some parts, you know, he plays the part pretty good where he's mostly quiet, and then he finally comes out of his shell. And the flashback sequences and everything, it comes together pretty well, not to get too much away. And there are a few surprises that actually had me fascinated the whole time. There are a couple of parts which were interesting, but then I feel like the film, like I said, it just drags on a little too long. It's just a lot to really take in. I like the superhero concept and how it all ends and everything, but like I said, I'm not going to give too much away, but I feel like I maybe need to rewatch it again, and that's kind of like how it was with The Sixth Sense, another film that was directed by this same director, which is probably his best in my opinion. It may have worn off its novelty, and this film, I feel like it's going to eventually, but it's definitely not his worst. I mean, compared to all the other crap that he's directed, it's definitely got some life to it. It's definitely better, like I said, than critics make it out to be, but maybe I just needed to give it another watch and let it grow on me a little bit. May not be for everybody, it's kind of more in the realm of Unbreakable-ish than Split, 
you know, because per se, and I like how it comes together, like I said, but it just, I think it may be left a little bit to be desired for some parts as well. Fascinating concept, but like I said, not for everybody. So, it's decent. It's passable. It did its job, but I think, like I said, it's just a little too long. So, not the worst, but not the best either. So, just a plain two weird remotes up. Pretty decent Shyamalan one movie. So, till next time, keep watching.